Hello everyone, welcome back to the Computer Networks course and today we shall see the basic characteristics of Computer Network. Before we step into the basic characteristics, we shall set some outcomes of this session. Upon the completion of this session, we will be able to understand the need for fault tolerant networks and scalable networks. We shall understand what is quality of service and we shall also understand why do we need security in computer networks. There are four basic characteristics any computer network should possess. Fault tolerance, scalability, quality of service and security. If we say there is a computer network and that computer network should be fault tolerant, it should be scalable, it should provide quality of service and it should also provide security. We shall see each of these in a detailed manner. Firstly, fault tolerance. Fault tolerance is the ability of the computer network to continue working despite failures and it should ensure there is no loss of service. For example, if we have a computer network and if there is a problem inside the computer network but still the computer network should work even after failures and thereby there is no loss of service. Before we go on to this example part, you just visualize this scenario. Imagine you are going home back from your college. You know very well about the best route to reach your home and you prefer taking this regular best route. Unfortunately, there is a blockage and you cannot take this route further. What will you do now? Will you go to your college back or you will find the next available route to reach your home? I guess we all will find the next available route and we will take that route to reach home. This is what we call as fault tolerance. We shall see an example for fault tolerance now. Let us assume that these two entities are communicating with each other, this computer and this web server. Through switch, this wireless router, this link, this router 1, router 3, router 5, switch and web server. Unfortunately, there is a failure, maybe either in the link or this router has gone down. So this router, instead of forwarding the data to this way, it forwards the data to router 2 so that this communication between this computer and this web server is not affected because of this failure. This is what exactly fault tolerance. I hope now you understood why do we need fault tolerant network. Because we need to work despite failures and we need to ensure there is no loss of service. This is what exactly fault tolerance. Now we shall see the second basic characteristic scalability. It is the ability to grow based on the needs and have good performance even after growth. For example, if there are 10 computers in a network and if again 10 computers are added to the network, this network should work as like the same even after adding these 10 computers. We shall see an example for the scalable network. The best example for a scalable network is the internet. Even this moment, many new devices are connecting to internet and communicating to each other. Internet handles this very perfectly and always gives scope for the newcomers. This is what we exactly call as scalability. In this example, assume 100 computers are connected to router 3 and we expect our computer network to work as like the same even after adding these 100 devices. This is what we call as scalability and this is the ability to grow based on the needs and have good performance even after the growth of the network. So far we have seen fault tolerance and scalability. Now we shall see the third basic characteristic of computer network, the quality of service. It is the ability to set priorities and manage data traffic to reduce data loss and delays. For example, if a router receives two packets at a time or two data at a time and this router should know to which data it should process first. This is what we call as set priorities. I shall explain about this quality of service in a detailed manner with an example. Have you noticed something is new in this picture which was not there in our previous lecture? It is the voice over IP phone. Vivo IP stands for voice over IP phone and this phone is different from our traditional landline phone. This voice over IP phone sends the voice data through the internet whereas our traditional landline phone sends the voice data through the dedicated telephone network. So this voice over IP phone is like our WhatsApp call. In WhatsApp call, our voice data is sent to the destination through the internet. 
but not through the telephone network. You may be wondering why I have brought in this voice over IP phone. I shall explain you why I have brought in this voice over IP phone for a reason. Let's assume this guy is sending some email data to an email server through router 1. At the same time, there are two guys who are talking over voice over IP phone through internet. The situation is, two guys are sending data at the same time where this router 1 is experiencing both the traffic at the same time. One is the email traffic, another one is the voice traffic that is the real-time communication. Now the question is, to which data this router 1 will give priority? Whether to the real-time communication or to the email data? Actually, router 1 will process voice over IP phone's data. Why? Because it is a real-time communication. In real-time communication, delays are not accepted. Whereas, delays are not a problem in email communication. A delay of one second in an email communication is not going to hurt the communication. Whereas, a delay of one second in a real-time communication matters a lot. And that is why this router gives priority to real-time communication than normal communication. When router experiences two different kinds of data at the same time, this router should be able to know to which data it should give priority. This is what we call as quality of service. The main aspect of this quality of service is that it handles loss, also it handles the delay. Now we shall see the final characteristics of computer network, that is the security. It is the ability to prevent unauthorized access, misuse or forgery. And not only prevention, network should also provide confidentiality, integrity and availability. To understand why do we need security, we shall visit this example. Suppose, someone from this computer is sending some confidential information to Amazon.com. Once the data leaves our computer, it is not in our hands. Internet has good guys as well as bad guys, whom we call as attackers. Please note, attackers are bad guys. Assume, our confidential information is flowing through Router 3 and what if an attacker steals this information from Router 3? They get access to our computer, they can misuse, or they can also involve in forgery. So it becomes an important task for a computer network to provide confidentiality. That is, the data which is not sent just like that as what we had sent. It means if it is a confidential data, this data is converted to a different form. If that form can be understandable only by the sender and the receiver. At the same time, there is no modification of data sent should be there. That is, this network should provide integrity. Whatever the sender is sending, that only the receiver should receive. So, this property we call as integrity. Attacker always try to deface this web servers, so that this resource becomes unavailable for access. So, it becomes the ultimate responsibility of a computer network to provide security. Because, network should prevent unauthorized access, misuse and forgery, and it should also provide confidentiality, integrity and availability. I hope now you are clear with all the basic characteristics of a computer network. A fault tolerant network, a scalable network, the quality of service and security. Thank you for watching. We shall meet again in the upcoming lectures.